Hi guys, this is Evelyn. Welcome to my channel again. Today I have a video that I'm really excited to talk about because it's something that is really personal for me and I'm just super happy and able to open up about these issues that I had and that I was able to come forward in a much stronger, positive way. Okay, so I actually did this video yesterday, but it went way too long, so I'm gonna try my best to make it, make it the shortest possible. Okay, so giving you a little bit of background, I started suffering from anxiety back in 2016. It was a pretty horrible year, a lot of stress. There was a big earthquake in Ecuador. I have problems with my dog who actually ended up dying. A dog I used to have before to my dog that I have now. It was super traumatizing. Plus, like most of all humans, we carry trauma from the past, which I do too. I carry some things in me that at some point, you know, anxiety is like your brain fighting for something at some point, you know, protecting you from something, but then anxiety becomes when your brain gets triggered to have that reaction when nothing is happening sometimes even. So I didn't know what it was. I was completely lost, completely confused. I thought I was going crazy. I never heard of anxiety before, of panic attacks. So I seriously thought I was going crazy, that I was having heart issues. So living in South America, there's so many uh, like stigma or like a taboo over these kind of things, uh, over like mental illness, like people it's ashamed to talk about them, people it's afraid to be in judge if they have a mental illness. So it was really hard for me, first not knowing. When I finally, and this took time for me, took time of me having this in interior ward for so long, not knowing what was happening, it got so bad that it affected my stomach. I couldn't eat a lot of things. I was just like this strong pain in my stomach. It was super, super horrible. And I also have this issue where I will always need to pee. And I always, always need to pee. So sometimes I will have to go to uh, the movie theaters with my family or something I will have to be like oh my god I need to pee I need to pee I need to pee and I remember being in a movie one time and just like peeing every freaking minute it was horrible and then just this kind of problems just kept escalating 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 and it got to a point where I ended up staying in my house and not leaving I let anxiety control my life completely completely the search spot where I, I surf it's right in front of the house I wasn't able to even go there. I couldn't leave my house because I was terrified. Terrified of having this feeling. So for me, it was more like the anxiety would make that my house was my comfort zone and there was no more comfort zone inside this. And I missed out on so many important things. I missed out on my family's birthdays and family Christmas dinners and a lot of important things just because I was terrified of leaving my house but I wouldn't express to them. So this all went on for what like six, seven months and then I started having depression. Immediately out of nowhere I started having this just being so sad and just like crying and crying and crying for no reason. Even though I'm a person and it's like so hard to cry, like it's likely for me to cry because I'm mad and because I'm sad. So I started like crying and crying and crying daily. I didn't know what was happening and then I started having suicidal thoughts. I live on a third floor and I imagine myself jumping out of it like all the time. I was imagining myself doing that and the only reason I didn't jump is because I knew I wasn't gonna die if I jumped. I knew I was just gonna end up in a hospital and hospitals terrify me so I never wanted to do that. This is things that I can talk about now and I'm strong enough to say it but back in the day it's something that I was not able to communicate to my family, to my boyfriend or anything. I have no reasons to leave and we're talking about this happened before the show started so I had a pretty amazing life and you're just in such a dark place 
that you cannot see all the good things but just be in this darkness it's horrible so I even thought about having a baby because I I mean I love kids but I don't want to have kids of my own I want to have I want to adopt kids one day but um, in this moment of depression even crossed my mind to have a baby because I thought that would give me a reason to leave that would make me happy again uh, so of course that's not a reason to bring a kid to the world and but I'm just giving like letting you know how sad I was and how empty I felt that I didn't have even a reason to leave that I thought bringing another person to live will give me the reasons to live so yeah I finally came out about it to my boyfriend you know Corey and I told Corey I say so this is what is happening, blah, 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 it's how I'm feeling, I think I'm going crazy. And then he said, I think you're having anxiety. And then he's like, uh, and I'm like, what is that? So then he started telling me and I started Googling and I went full on Google and all of this. So it's like doing the most research I could. But then Corey needed to leave, so he left and my depression hit worse. Not because of like, of course I miss him, I miss him, but I was used to this relationship of him living and me staying. But it, it was just like the, the whole pressure of all the things that were happening. I couldn't work my bar properly. I couldn't do a lot of things. I couldn't go hang out with my friends. Like I said, anxiety controlled my life completely at that time. So then I started communicating with my family and I say, you know what, I, I'm having anxiety, this is what anxiety is, this is what's happening, it's the reasons I've been now coming to all our meetings and all our stuff at the beginning and for a Latino family, it's hard to understand this kind of things. So like they will bully me a little and I'm not offended by it because in here we bully people and it's like the normal kind of thing, not always, but especially in families. But that's another subject. So sometimes I'll be like, oh what, you need a piece? So why don't you just wear a diaper? Or they'll be like, why don't you just relax? Like, oh, you're just making drama. Like, they wouldn't understand. And it took them months for them to understand. But when they finally did, they were such a support. They started coming to visit me at my house and cooking for me. And because the stress of me, if someone came to visit me and I have to, I'll be cooking and doing everything for them. It would have been much worse for me at that point. So they will come and they will like do everything, everything. It was amazing. And praying, praying and praying to God for me. My family is really, 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 really nice people. Okay, so then I was able to communicate, express. I was able to rely on my family, but I was also living alone during all this time that I was going through this process. So then it got to a point when I was like, pushing myself to do, you know, little things, little things, little things, like I'm gonna go surfing over here because it's something that I love, but now I'm feeling extremely anxious about it and I don't wanna feel this way about something that I love. So I started pushing myself, even though I felt horrible at the beginning. But after I was doing that, like after I went outside, after I took a walk, after I, talk with some friends I felt so happy so accomplished that I did something and it's so weird how you can go from being completely normal to then these little things being such a huge steps for you it's crazy how the brain can just one day decide to mess up with you anyways I like I said I did a lot of research and in my research, I found out a lot of things about, you know, diet and meditation and breathing exercise and all of that. So here is my way of how I deal with my depression and my anxiety and how I can now tell you fully and completely that I'm completely 100% free of depression and my anxiety. It's something that it doesn't control my life anymore. So what I did. Uh, first was to Google about the whole diet. I used to drink coffee my whole life. I feel like coffee was my first drink growing up. Since like I was what, three years old, four years old? I've been drinking coffee my whole life, three times a day, four times a day, five times a day. So I 
it's hot. I take off. It's not good for it. So I completely I cut it. And I miss it. Of course I miss the coffee, but the way I was feeling was so horrible that I totally did cut it. So I cut coffee. I cut sodas. No sodas at all. No processed juices. So let's say that I wanted an orange juice. I wasn't going to buy a fake orange juice or a juice in a bottle that has all these chemicals on it. No. I will have to buy the oranges and make my own juice. Like I completely stopped everything that is processed, nothing frozen, no, nothing of that. So everything fresh, everything organic, everything healthy, everything good for my body. I stopped eating certain kinds of beans. I stopped eating broccoli because like I said, my stomach was a mess. I couldn't even handle certain, certain kinds of food. So no broccoli, no beans no milk and and a lot of a lot of things like like that like heavy food in general nothing fried and yeah like it's really healthy really healthy food no alcohol and not even one drop i stopped alcohol completely during those times like yeah now you guys know me now now it's different i like i said i feel better i can have a drink here and there but I don't get drunk drunk because if I get drunk drunk the anxiety next day it will kill me and that's horrible so I don't like that but it's not okay anyways so then I did that with the diet and I did exercising I know a lot of people have problems sometimes with their bodies they cannot like their back hurts their knee hurts or something like that but even if you're like you know like clapping back and forth or if you're like punching back and or like whatever you can do that it can make you a little bit active that is great it starts activating your body and activating the happy place of your brain music I always say this sing when you're sad sing when you're um, happy because if you sing when you're sad you are gonna be happy at some point and if you sing when you're happy, you're going to be extra happy. So no matter if you're not a good singer, just like, you know, sing a little here and there, put some music on, happy music. I like reggaeton a, a lot, but then like sad, I'm like, yes, just party move. So I will play music, I will pray a lot. I will say always be thankful. I wake up every morning and I'm thankful for everything in my life. I'm thankful for my family, for my all my loved ones you know my pets my food the sun the moon like everything just be thankful every day and and recognize all these good things i know that when you're in depression it's so hard to see all the good things around you but once you start focusing on one little thing at once you're gonna start seeing how your darkest world slightly is starting to change different colors so definitely don't do drops if you have anxiety I wouldn't recommend that it's gonna mess up with your brain anyway so no drugs no alcohol okay let me just get it all straight so first thing no diet I mean <laughs> first thing a good diet so like just eating healthy I'm not telling you things in here like for you losing weight or whatever no this is about your body feeling good so eating healthy um, exercise three I say being thankful Four, push yourself to do these little things push yourself to live at your house for like 10 minutes or something whatever it is not matter how small it is what you do push yourself to do something that that you were used to doing before like with me I couldn't even go to surf right in front so something that I used to do so for you, if it's like meeting out with a friend and then you start feeling anxious and you don't want to do it anymore, start pushing yourself, even for a bit, or maybe during phone call or something, but just start to push yourself a little. Another one is learn to say no. You need to learn to say no because this is really important. It was something that it was killing me because I always would say yes. People will come to my house and just stay the whole weekend. People will always be wanting so many things and I will always say yes Evelyn we need you for this thing yes Evelyn can we stay in your house yes Evelyn can we do this blah, blah, blah. yes always but I was always having this pressure of 
helping people, not, I mean, not helping, but like of satisfying people's needs instead of mine. Because I was in such a moment of my life where I was dealing with all these feelings and then having people in my house wasn't the most comfortable thing at the, at the moment, but I was afraid to say no. But that was something that Corey actually told me. He said, no, if, you don't not, if you're not comfortable with something, just say no. And then I start, I start saying no. And it's amazing. You don't understand the freedom you get once you start saying no. Evelyn, we want to throw a party here at your house. We have some DJs. You want to come? No. Why not? No, because I don't feel comfortable. I don't want to deal with all of this. No. Instead of trying to look good for other people, I learn to say no. If something doesn't give me peace of mind, I don't want it. I don't want it and that's what you should do too. Stop living your life for other people. It's your life. Make it good. It's up to you. It's in your hands. And one day when you're able to realize these things, you'll be so much more happy, so much more free out of all of the society chains that we care sometimes. You know? Okay, so no say I learned to say no. Learn to let go. This is an important too because sometimes in a room we have so much crap that we have saved from like forever. I used to save like the, the, the wristband that I got in my first party I ever went. I have like the wine uh, opener that I got something somewhere special. Like all of these little things that were special. But at the same time, it's like those memories are in your head. You don't need to collect all of these things. They become like heavy. Like my room doesn't have too many things because I just try. I learned to let go. Just let go. I have a bunch of messages on my Instagram. Delete it all. Let go. I just don't need to be accumulating things anymore. No more. Have my pictures. Let go. I just feel so good about letting go. And it was something that it was so hard. Before I'd be like, no, but this is the book that my ex gave me and I love it and I cannot let it go. But the book is all like, you're just collecting things in here. Give it to somebody else to read it. And I did. I let everything go. Go, 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 go. Everything went away and I just feel so much more free. Everything is just better because when you let go of things from the past, you're just welcoming good things from the future to you. So meditation, it's good. If you can do some yoga at your house with some YouTube videos, great. I'm not a yoga professional, but I do some yoga here and there sometimes. Um, breathing, it's important. I mean, I'm glad most of you guys, I mean, I, I know my followers mostly live in the States or in countries that are more developed than mine. So anxiety and depression is a subject that most of the people understand and relate to it. So that's good that you guys know that, you know, you're not alone. A lot of people go through this. I used to tell myself all the time, and this was part of my depression too. I was always like, why am I not normal? Why am I not normal? Why does this happen to me? Like, I always dream with traveling and doing so many things. And, and anxiety stopped so much from me, so much. But yeah, just know that you're, you're okay. So here it comes to the medicines that I took. Every morning I will have, and I still do, a uh, chamomile tea. I love it. Love, love, love chamomile tea. It's so good, it's so relaxing. So I just get a chamomile tea, and I have water, and then I buy valerian drops. I don't know, you probably know. I'm gonna write it in the description as well, but there's valerian drops, and it's these drops that you, I, I know I've seen it in Amazon, you guys can buy it there for sure. And I just put it on my tea, uh, depending how many drops you can put according to what it says in there. I have one that was 30, so I'll put 30 valerian drops in my, in my tea and just like drink it in the morning. And I also had a passiflora, it's a, another plant, all natural, that was a medicine. If I cannot find it online, I'm gonna um, buy one again and show you guys. It's like super cheap, like $3 or $4. And what you do is you take a spoon uh, before every meal. So like before breakfast, before lunch, and before dinner. 
you take it uh, and it makes you feel so good it's so relaxing it helps you with your anxiety you're not supposed to take it for more than three months so I took mine for two I didn't want to go more than that but it made me it really helped me so I also did valerian I got the plant I don't know if you guys can get the plant there but I also got the actual plants I will just cut the leaves and make my own tea out of it and I will have one of those ones go, uh, to go to sleep every day so it's just living with teas, valerian drops, and this passiflora thing that I was drinking. And to sleep, I use some of the that vapor up thing. Sorry, I have like here. You know, these things. They're in every Walmart in the States. So usually when you have these issues, you cannot sleep either. So what I will do is I just open this and put a little bit in here, a little bit in here, a little bit in here, in here, and a little bit on my nose. And in 10 minutes, I'm asleep. 10 to 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes I'm gone. Just gone to drink world so fast. So, I mean, I'm just saying, if you're taking pills for sleeping, or something like that. I met a girl when I was in the States and she was so sweet and all that, but it was so sad to see her dealing with depression and anxiety, but mostly anxiety. Anxiety will make her go crazy. Like I was going through anxiety too, but I remember that she will be on medication. She'll go home. She'll take these pills. They will keep her, like it will send her sleep. But then the next day when she needed to go to work, she was like, always drinking coca-cola and drinking coffee so she could be able to stay awake so it was this circle and i'm telling you coca-cola and coffee is so bad for you if you have anxiety and so she was in this this circle that was never getting better never till now i'm pretty sure she's not getting better like i still i know her and it, it's sad so i totally recommend you guys trying these things that I'm, I'm telling you. It's just Valeriana drops with chamomile teas mostly. No meditation, being thankful, live your life for yourself. No matter how small your achievements are, they still achievements. And you're amazing. Just remember that. There's so many reasons to be alive. There's so many people that care about you. If you don't have a good family, then you maybe have a dog. If you don't have a dog, maybe you have a cat. If you don't have a cat, then you have I don't know, a rat in your house, whatever. <laughs> Something that you can love and that you can feel love back. Just be thankful. Be thankful for the sky. Be thankful for the food. There's so many people that don't even have a plate of food. So we are really, really blessed. And that's the way we should see the life. People always tell me, how can you be so positive? But I am so positive now because I come from a dark place. I know how hard it was and I don't want to be there anymore and now I'm just thankful so thankful that I'm out of it and thankful that I can appreciate everything around me and I'm just so happy and I don't know what would have happened to me if I started the show when I was going through that anxiety and depression it would have killed me the amount of negativity I have received the amount of hate and like people telling me to kill myself and all the horrible things that they had said to me if i didn't file anxiety and depression before this i don't even know what will happen like i don't even know but i'm glad it did and even after me putting my chest right there for all this hate even then i'm able to still smile and just say like you know what whatever that people think their opinion I don't control what they see on TV I don't control the way they perceive what they see on TV so it's not gonna run my life so that's what I've been doing and I encourage you to not listen to negative criticism neg negativity that people send to you people hate seeing other people happy most of the people it's that way and which sucks because that's not how it should be but just you know I cheers to everyone's success and that's how the world should be we all should be happy about other people making it in life so but a lot of people it's not happy when so things go good to you so if someone is telling you stuff like that just listen to yourself the power it's on what you say and i always say bring good things to the universe when people ask you how are you great even if you're crying inside you're great 
How's it going with this and that? Great. Everything that you put out there, everything that leaves your mouth, that you put in the universe, should be good. Because then good things will come your way. So, yeah, I think that's basically it. I hope this really helps. I'm here to help whoever needs help. I have talked with girls already in my Instagram, usually girls, and they, they message me about like weight issues, depression issues, anxiety issues, and I always talk to them. So, they are, they are doing good. Some of them are looking professional help because, of course, I'm not a professional. I can just talk from my experience and let you know what I've been through. So, if you have more questions about it, please leave it on the comments. If you uh, somehow need something else, I'm here to help. And I love you guys. I know that it's extremely sad to feel sad. The anxiety high so well. I remember nobody ever knew that I was going through these things till I decided to say it. Because you can hide under a smiley face all the time. And that's what happened to so many comedians, you know, like there they go, the funniest people, and then they suicide. So we should avoid that. It's good to be able to open up and say because you feel more free. And if people don't understand, and my family didn't at the beginning, at one, day, at one point they will. And if they don't, you understand. And that's the most important thing for you to recognize what's happening in your brain and for you to find a solution, which is all these things that I told you, they will totally help. And just come out of this with a better outlook in life. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and this, for sure, it's something that makes you so strong. You're gonna be so strong and so proud, so proud of who you are and everything that you have done. I guarantee you. My love to you always. I really hope again that this helps you. Um, Whenever you need an advice, whenever you need something, I'm gonna write the names of the things in here that I took, but I also am gonna post it on my Instagram. When I, if I get the pictures, you can go there, and I'm gonna post it there, the pictures on my stories. And I can always show again if someone wants to see more. Love you guys, thank you for being here, thank you for subscribing, and strength to you. Coronavirus time is hard, and I know it's taking a tool on all of us. But we are gonna make it out of this. People have done it 100 years ago. We can do it again.